Tell the world I don't have money, but life is wonderful, and every day is sunny. The trick is this: don't hide from anyone, just live in joy, be free inside. Please join us. <laughs> Mother's Day uh, to everyone, certainly to those of you who have in this life embraced motherhood and taken the opportunity to lead new souls into love and into light, and, but to all of you for being a channel for Divine Mother and those beautiful qualities that make this world a good place. Mm. So I'd like to read from... Rays of the One Light, and these are weekly commentaries uh, based on the Bhagavad Gita and the Bible. <clears throat> and this is week uh, 19, The Secret of Right Action. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. One of the most famous stories in the Gospels is that of Martha and Mary. Jesus, visiting the home of Martha, was teaching while her sister Mary <clears throat> was teaching while her sister Mary sat at his feet absorbing his divine love and wisdom. Martha, meanwhile, busied herself with serving her guests and was upset with Mary for not helping her. Lord, she cried, doesn't it matter to you that my sister has left me to do all this serving alone? Please ask her to help me. Martha, Martha, Jesus answered, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. 
This story is classic, for Martha's complaint is very understandable and not on the surface of it spiritually wrong. Jesus may well have told Mary to get up and help her. We don't really know that he didn't. Consider it as he always was of others' needs. But the teaching here doesn't concern the obvious dilemma of devotees to work for God or to spend all, one time, all one's time in prayer. It concerns rather the attitude of the mind. Jesus didn't tell Martha, Martha, you are doing too much. He told her rather, you are letting your work affect your inner peace. That was the contrast. Not work versus contemplation, but restless preoccupation versus peaceful absorption under all circumstances. As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, the second chapter, actions performed under the influence of desire are greatly inferior to those which are guided by wisdom. Happiness eludes people when they act from self-interest. Seek shelter, therefore, in the equanimity of wisdom. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh. like to welcome you all. My name is Nayaswami Ananta. This is Nayaswami Maria. And uh, Mother's Day, I think, originated in the United States. So for those online in other countries, we're celebrating the Cosmic Divine Mother and honoring those qualities uh, which enrich our world. And um, I'm thankful for all of you, the guests of the Expanding Light and the guests of the uh, Seclusion Retreat, uh, for being here and the community members uh, to celebrate with us today. I'd like to read a poem. Well, it's not a poem. It's a writing from Paramahansa Yogananda from Whispers from Eternity. Yogananda wrote, The bee of my mind loves to drink from the blue lotus feet. O Divine Mother, the bee of my mind is ever engrossed in thy lotus feet of blue light. It thinks the honey of thy motherly love. It drinks the honey of thy motherly love. This bee will drink no other honey but that which is graced by thy perfume sweetness. O Divine Mother, flying over the gardens of my fancy, denying myself the honey of lesser pleasures, I have found at last the ambrosia buried in thy lotus heart. I have been thy busy bee, I have soared through the fields of many incarnations, breathing the airs of countless experiences. I will roam now no more. Thy fragrance has quenched at last the perfume thirst of my soul. For those of you who are not familiar, Paramahansa Yogananda and Swami Kriyananda worshiped God as the Divine Mother that aspect of the divine that is the source of the entire physical universe, the source of all sweetness, wisdom, power. We see it embodied in uh, wonderful mothers and we honor that. It's a wonderful thing really because we, um, Kriyananda one time was talking about the need for the influence of divine mother in this world at this time, in this century when we seem to have forgotten um, kindness in our uh, governments, in our business dealings as a foremost requirement. And so he was very pleased to see that, although it put us a little bit on the edge of uh, the current culture because sometimes when you tell people you worship the Divine Mother, they uh, think that that's 
uh, not big enough, um, but it's much bigger than they imagine. So um, this reading today, The Secret of Right Action, uh, calls us our attention to the ideal mother, mother of the universe, but embodied by many of our mothers. I know that not all mothers uh, measure up to the uh, standards, but we have plenty of mothers that do. And uh, I know my own mother was definitely an example of the Divine Mother, and, and let us know from an early age that that was going on. I think I've told that story. I was coming home from preschool once, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, in the hallway of our apartment building, my mother turned to me and said, you know, boys, I'm, my, your dad and I are not your real parents. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's so urgent? She said, no, actually, God is your real mother and father. And we're just taking care of you until you're old enough to take care of yourself. And I, I turned to my mom and said, Mom, everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I realized later that not everyone knows that, um, but they should know that. And uh, so the, the secret of right action is that, that sense of freedom from the ego. And Martha's problem this morning was not that she was getting the food ready. What do you serve Jesus in those days? Falafel and hummus, I guess. I don't know what they should making, but she's whipping it up in there and... She's lost the fact that her guru's in the other room. Mary has gone to sit by the guru and just soak up that vibration of the divine consciousness. And what Martha missed was not that the food needed to be prepared. That's not the point. The point was that we're preparing food for the divine mother. We're in that consciousness. There's the guru in the other room. Soak it up while you're making the food. Soak it up while you're serving the food. Serve it up while you're in that vibration. What's the source of the food? What's the source of the plan that food nourishes us? Where did the food come from? Where did the sunshine and the rain and the wind and the earth and the minerals come from? It comes from the Divine Mother. And that's the consciousness that Christ was trying to get Martha to keep with and by extension all of us. We all have duties in this world and we are trying to realize that we come from Divine Mother, that we are a part of Divine Mother, that we begin with Divine Mother, that we end with Divine Mother, that Divine Mother is our real parents, that we have everything from the Mother Divine. And that consciousness is what we want to foster. And we lose our peace, we lose our awareness of Divine Mother when the ego gets in there. So again, the problem child is Maya. That's where we get off track. Is we, she, Martha's thought was, hey, what about me? I need some help over here. You know, let's come on, come on. Now that's a good thing, really. I mean, more disciples, but more disciples to help have that consciousness of the Divine Mother. As truth seekers of all paths, our job in this world is to realize that we are part of the Divine Mother, that we come from the Divine Mother, that we are the children of the Divine Mother. And in our practices, whatever our spiritual practices are, we start the day and we meditate or we chant or we do japa or we do rosary or we bow or we read the Bible or whatever it is. There's no better path, but we find our path. And in the, we start the day and we try to merge with the Divine Mother. We close out the duality, we close our eyes, we feel the presence of the Divine Mother as divine love. We see the light at the point between the eyebrows or we look for the light. We feel that harmony, we have quiet. Then we go out into the day and we have to serve. Almost all of us have jobs, uh, or soon will have jobs. Uh, but we then have the dilemma. Can we keep the consciousness of meditation through the day? Can we keep the oneness with the mother through the day? And that's where the dilemma is. And that's where Martha made her mistake. Because if we 
meditate deeply, we do our spiritual practices. And then if we slide into the world of duality, and you may have noticed that the world outside is not conducive to peace, harmony, and ego-free living. When, you, when we read this affirmation about service, uh, and you think of your favorite movie star, baseball player, serving, I'm just here to serve, you know? There's no, there's no thought of the bright lights or the red carpet or anything like that. Or in the business climate, the CEOs and the, you know, the, the aura of, I did this, I'm the founder, I'm the top salesman, I'm the best singer, I'm the rock star, movie star, preacher, <laughs> it's there in that world too. And so we realize that the world is trying to pull us out of that oneness with the mother. And that's how we fall from steady spiritual progress. We enhance our spiritual progress when we let our work be selfless. When we stay with the mother as we go through our work and we feel Divine Mother's energy. Who gave you that brilliant idea at work? Your mother, your divine mother. Who gave you that intelligence that has made you the top selling salesman in region three? <laughs> divine mother gave you that. And remember that. So what we really would need to do as disciples is to carry the vibration of morning sadhana, morning meditation into our work. And this is an individual challenge, and every one of us has to write a script that works for us because it doesn't work the same for everyone. I am very lucky because sometimes I work all day and I don't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> but I talk to the people that are working with, that's wonderful. We, but but it, at Ananda Village, we all know that we're working for Divine Mother and we have a set of projects and we talk about how to get it done and then we go do it and then we come back and we meditate again and we offer everything we've done in the day to the Mother. That's wonderful. But if you have to build buildings, push deals, be a lawyer, those are, those are all challenges, but you can do it. You can keep the qualities of the Divine Mother with you. And I've had the experience of working with many builders and developers. I was a contractor. My dad was a contractor. I built churches and buildings, or helped build them. I didn't build them single-handedly. There's always other people involved. Divine Mother always gives us projects to work together. But I found that, the, that many of the really successful contractors and developers are people who have this attitude of, let's get this project done. Let's, let's do this, you know, we, yeah, we can do this. And there's enthusiasm and joy. Those are aspects of the Divine Mother, aren't they? Isn't joy one of the eight aspects of God? Isn't peace and light and beauty? So if you have beautiful flowers like this, they're come, they come from the Divine Mother and they're arranged by the Divine Mother and they're presented by the Divine Mother. So if you're a florist, you can be thinking of that. At work, you don't have to say anything at work to all your coworkers about the Divine Mother if it's not appropriate. Oftentimes in construction sites, it's not appropriate <laughs> to share that. But inwardly, you're, wow, this is really, this is fun. This is going to be a house for people. This is going to be an office building and, and wonderful things are going to come from this. We're going to offer this church to our brothers and sisters. So the secret of right action isn't really so much a secret, is it? It's more, more a secret to the ego. It's a secret of Maya that wants to keep it secret. But we can in, bring that in. And so our job is to work, to keep your day job. But as you do it, find ways to stay engrossed in the blue lotus feet of the Divine Mother. Feel that energy as intelligence, as beauty, as kindness. If you're a social worker, if you're a hospice worker, we have some people that work with hospice, they're getting ready to leave the world. How would the mother comfort you as the child is leaving? I think it's called the Pieta. And there's, the, there's Jesus at age 33, and there's Mary. And she's, she's comforting her son, because her son has left the body, seemingly. But the point is that we need to bring the Divine Mother's energy into everything that we do. And we each have to find a way that works for us. 
with our coworkers, with our faculty members, with our clients, with our whatever it is. Find a way where the Divine Mother is with you at work all day, that you can feel her joy. You use the intelligence that she gave you, that sparkling personality, that wonderful array of tools that you have that can serve and feel it. Now, you all know about mitochondria DNA. This is the reality that all children of the mother have these traits passed out by genes. But what we're going to talk about today is mitochondrial DNA. <laughs> and that is, Mata is mother, and so this is Divine Mother's DNA. This is what we have. We are made from the Divine Mother. We're all children of the Divine Mother. Every single one of us, every country, every race, every occupation, everywhere in the world, all beings are children of the Divine Mother and they have the Divine Mother's traits. They have the qualities of sympathy and kindness and wisdom and strength. And we need to call on that more and more. We need to live in that so that our meditation and our service reinforce each other and we realize Hand in hand, we're dancing together. That's the reality. When Swami wrote this chant, we thought, wow, this is a good image. This is what we're doing. We work really hard sometimes. And Divine Mother works with us sometimes. And the more she works with us, the more we feel her presence and her reality, then when you close the eyes at the end of the day to meditate, you feel her again. You all know the story from the autobiography of a yogi where Master goes to visit Master Mahashai. Master Mahashai is a great disciple of the Divine Mother. He sees everything as Divine Mother. He's in a, a samadhi state all the time. He lives at 50 Amherst Road, right up the corner from where Master lives. Master goes to see him all the time and visits him. And, and he, one day Yogananda comes and he says, Master Mahashai, he says, I'm talking to my Divine Mother. Well, this is intriguing to Master. He wants to hear about this. So he goes in, he talks to Master Mahashai. He says, I want to hear from the Divine Mother. Have I, done, have I pleased her at all? And, and uh, he actually, Master has a very powerful experience there because it's the place where his physical, his birth mother died in this house. <coughs> so Master says, oh, I, I just, you know, I'm going to do. So Master Mahashai blesses him. He says, well, you go home and talk. I'll... I'll talk to the Divine Mother. So Master goes home, goes down the street, the little boy, and he goes and meditates. And of course, Master has a vision of the Divine Mother. And she says, ever have I loved thee, always will I love thee. Now, those words are given to Master, but they're given to you, each one of us. Ever has the Divine Mother loved us, always will she love us. Why don't we tune into that? So Master had this great vision of Divine Mother and realized that his earthly mother was just taking care of him for a while, but the Divine Mother is the cosmic mother of, mother of all of us. So the next day, Master goes back. He says, very early in the morning, as soon as he said it, there was the decorum of the morning <laughs> appropriate. He says, well, Master Mahashai, did, Ma did Divine Mother say anything to me? And Master Mahashai said, mischievous little sir, you know that at 10 o'clock last night, the Divine Mother appeared to you <laughs> and he scolded Yogananda. And the two of them retained their oneness with the Divine, which, ma which Master kept. He saw everything as coming from the Divine Mother. Kriyananda also saw everything as coming from the Divine Mother. We need to establish that as in our day-to-day -day consciousness. Because if we meditate deeply and then slide back into the ego, then Martha was a minor offender in this, you know, just Lord help me, but we'll get caught by the separation, by the ego. I'm doing this. Hey, I'm not getting, I'm not getting nurtured. I'm not, you know, I don't, the guru's not contacting me. I'm not getting help. The world doesn't recognize me. I need a raise. I need benefits. I need, you probably do need benefits. You probably need a raise, but <laughs> everything comes from the divine mother. And if we appreciate what we've been given, the sky, the clouds, the wind, the rain, our bodies, our brothers and sisters, the 
positive influence in this world. This is what we need to put foremost in our lives. If we don't, it will elude us. It will escape us. And we will become cynical and out of tune with the divine. And you can fall all the way back to being worldly if you don't call on the fact that everything we have is from the Divine Mother. So this is a Mother's Day for all of us. This is a celebration for all of us to remind ourselves that everything is from the Divine Mother. That nothing that we have, we're not creating anything. We're rearranging what the Mother gave us. And I'm going to, at, during the offertory, we're going to present a song that Swami Kriyananda wrote, Mother of Us All. Listen to this song with the vibration that it has. It's that inward vibration of the mother. All your children, mother, call you, knowing not it's you they call. All the presidents and the prime ministers and the kings and the generals, they're all calling for power. Power is Shakti. It comes from the Divine Mother. And those who call for peace, they want peace. That's Shanti. It comes from the Divine Mother. Well, they want light, they want beauty. That is Jyoti. That's an aspect of God, of the Divine Mother. So everything, it's so funny because we've come from the Divine Mother and we're in the Divine Mother and then we say, where's the Divine Mother? You dummies. <laughs> She's all around us and everything that you have and even the question that you compose to ask Mother comes from the intelligence of the Divine Mother within you. So live in that and get used to that and drink that nectar and surround yourself with it. And if your brothers and sisters are not ready for that, if they want to fight and yell and scream and argue and call each other names, then your brothers and sisters are behaving badly. And what would your mother say? <laughs> behave yourselves. <laughs> Act, that's what my mom would say. Behave yourself, boys. You know, I had two brothers. Behave yourselves. And that was like, oh yeah, we're not behaving. Okay, a lot of our brothers and sisters are not behaving. That's not our problem. That's mother's problem. Our problem is how do we behave? Can we be kinder? Can we love more? Can we feel that peace? Can we be absorbed in that beauty more and more and more? We can. So let's do it together. God bless you all. Oh, yeah. 